Six months ago, Mark Shuttleworth turned the world of Ubuntu upside down when he announced the end of mobile phone development for Canonical. They were no longer interested in doing convergence, and that meant their custom desktop, Unity, was no longer required. It was literally surplus to requirements. Well, development has now been taken over by the community, but what we have here is Ubuntu using the GNOME desktop. And they've managed to style it with the familiar orange, purple, and black theming. So, looks like it. <sighs> Not really anything like what Unity was, though, to use. So let's take a look at what we have. Ubuntu 17.10, which is codenamed Artful Aardvark, is using the Linux kernel 4.13.0, and upon system boot up, we're using 683 mega RAM. Hmm. Okay, maybe that's the worst I've seen out of the Ubuntu derivatives so far, but it's not too horrific. So Ubuntu is using the GNOME 3.26.1 desktop, and you can see the application theming does look very familiar. However, you can notice on the application title bar that the Close, Minimize, Maximize buttons are on the right-hand side. Well, they've been on the left-hand side for quite a long time. Hmm. One feature of the GNOME desktop is it does pack some buttons into the application title bar. It's not really something I like because it does make the application title bar a bit too chunky. Well, combined with the top panel, you do end up with a lot of wasted space, which is particularly noticeable on smaller monitors like netbooks. When you have an application open, the top panel is darkened, but with nothing open, it is transparent. Lights DM has now been replaced with GDM, and Ubuntu now defaults to using the Wayland display server instead of Xorg, and I believe it will work on NVIDIA graphics cards. However, if you are having issues with Wayland, you can easily switch back to Xorg. Canonical have added their own dash to dock to the left-hand side of the screen. This is kind of to ease the transition from Unity to GNOME. It is a fork of dash to dock and actually lacks some of the features, such as being able to move the application launcher up to the top. So the application launcher is stuck at the bottom, which is a bit annoying because the application launcher in Unity was at the top. Hmm. Canonical are no longer offering a 32-bit ISO, However, you can upgrade from a 32-bit system, and you can install a 32-bit system from NetInstaller or Ubuntu Server. As for the desktop version of Ubuntu, it is 64-bit only. I don't normally talk about the backgrounds, well, these are the generic ones, but with the Ubuntu default, it is the first time since, um, was it 2008, that we have the animal featured in the wallpaper. And this is a fine demonstration of the buttons that are in the application title bar, quite a few there. The settings menu for GNOME has been redesigned, and this is the settings for the dock. So you can change the icon size. Uh, you can auto hide it. So yeah, push an application over and it hides away. And you can move its position on the screen. So in some respects, this is more customizable than Unity ever was. The Amazon launcher still features, and it now uses the default browser, which in this instance is Firefox. So we also have launchers to help software files or Nautilus. And a point to mention, if you open up two instances, you do have additional dots here to represent multiple windows. Looking at the alt tab application selector, it does actually look very familiar to what it was in Unity. When you're doing a file copy or downloading a large file, it will show the progress on dash dock. The default music player is Rhythmbox, and it has been customized slightly to change the layout. So you have the play, pause, rewind, and track selection at the bottom of the application. Multimedia controls are no longer under the sound menu. Instead, they're under the time. Very weird. So clicking on time actually shows the notifications and calendar. On the right-hand side, we have a combined network, sound, and shutdown menu, which also has links to the lock screen and settings. Going back to a sound menu a moment, Ubuntu is now a lot better at playing music out of Bluetooth speakers. There is a night light now included in Ubuntu, so we can start searching for night. It goes to displays. We have a night light here we can turn on and off. You can either default to sunset or sunrise, or set your own custom times. And as it says there, night light makes the screen colour warmer. This can help prevent eye strain and sleeplessness. LibreOffice has been included, and we'll check the version number, so it's now using the version 5.4.1. If you want to make changes to the system, the easiest way is with GNOME Tweak. And incidentally, if you're looking to install new applications, you can either search for them here, or use GNOME software. 
for example, searching for GIMP, if I select it, it'll automatically open it in software and give me the opportunity to install it. In regards to the tweaks, you can change the theming, the icons that are shown on the desktop, install new extensions. Uh, we've got the fonts, so they've actually defaulted to using the Ubuntu font. The items that we're showing in the top bar under Windows, and you can change the close, minimize, maximize to the left hand side. There it is. Although it won't show it on this application, but if I open files, there we go. Close, minimize, maximize on the left hand side. And this is the options for workspaces, which I haven't actually talked about up until now, but you can drag applications onto like new desktops. So put that onto its own desktop. So yeah, activities is kind of like multiple desktops. So that was a look at Ubuntu 17.10. So Canonical have made the effort to make GNOME slightly easier to use for Unity users. And they've customized the theming to more traditional Ubuntu colors. So is it a good distro? Yes and no. Yes in that it's easier for a new GNOME user to use, and no because it's not really a stock GNOME desktop. So if you're after a stock GNOME desktop, then no Ubuntu is not really the answer for you now. You would have to undo Canonical's customizations to make it more stock, or go with a different distribution. So is it worth upgrading to? Well, it depends. If you want to stick with the Unity desktop, then no. Go down the Ubuntu Mate route, they have a much better implementation of Unity. Because there are quite a few features missing here, for example, lack of global menu, lack of heads-up display, lack of ability to be able to launch applications by pressing the super and numeric key, which super and two, that would have launched Rivenbox. If you used any of those features regularly, they would no longer be accessible to you, which may be quite annoying. Yeah, I would say it's entirely your choice with what you want from your system. I would certainly not recommend Ubuntu 17.10 to new users of Ubuntu, because I have a feeling things will change again come Ubuntu 18.04. If you're a new user, I would go down the derivative route, look at something like Ubuntu Mate, Ubuntu Budgie, or Kubuntu. I think nowadays the derivatives of Ubuntu have a lot more going for them than Ubuntu itself. So that was a look at Ubuntu 17.10, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.